In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create a matrix reveal effect in After Effects. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dreadlabs and I'm a visual artist and graphic designer. Recently, I was playing around with After Effects and I found a neat way to create this matrix number revealing animation in After Effects. I'm not sure what to call it. You can see it on the screen right now, but I want to show you how I created this because it's a fairly interesting process, I think. So without any further ado, let's dive straight into the video. All right, so as you can see, we have a couple of elements that are at work here, and we're just simply gonna start on the very first one. And based on the size of your composition that you wanna use, uh, this is gonna be a little bit differently, but to make it a little bit easier, I'm gonna make a composition at 1000 by 1000 pixels. So we're gonna make a new composition, like I said, 1000 by 1000, and we'll call this matrix text. So the next thing you wanna do is show your grid which you can do by going to view show grid and you want to go to your preferences grids and guides and you want to make sure that your grid line is every 100 pixels with a subdivision of two so what does that mean basically we now have 20 by 20 uh, grid numbers in here if that makes sense and if you want to you can actually make it higher that being said i'm actually going to make mine 40 by 40. So all we need to do is do a subdivision every four times. If we click OK, it means that we now have a nice little grid of four pixels in every single grid, which results in 40 squares in every direction. So the next thing that we want to do is make a text block. And we can do this by clicking and dragging a text area over our composition. And all you want to do now is paste in random letters. Instead of like having to smash your keyboard, I actually also have a piece of text in the description down below that you can just simply copy and paste. All right, so the most important part is that you make sure that every single row contains 40 letters. And another thing that you need to keep in mind is that you are gonna use a mono typeface. So the one that I'm gonna use is Fira Mono. I think you can just download this one on Google Fonts, but every single system should have at least one mono font on your computer. And the next thing that we need to make sure of is that every single letter is basically boxed in one of these grid lines so it's gonna be a little bit finicky but this will be worth it along the way and you need to play around with your line height as you can see and i think we're close here of course i need to still add a couple of lines but let me just copy and paste those there we go so let's zoom in and make sure that every single letter is within its own square. I think we need to lower the line height a little bit. And you can micromanage this with uh, holding control or command on your keyboard and pressing the up and down arrows. That will make you move it in increments of 0.1 pixel instead of one pixel. And I think, so the alignment that I chose is justified. So I think if we just move this in from the right, then it should be able to center on every single grid point. And I think we are good to go looking at this. So let's just go and fit this to our screen right now. And the next thing that we want to do is animate all of these letters. So what you're going to do is open this thing up, click on animate, click on character offset. And on this character offset, you need to hold alt or option if you're on a Mac and click on this keyboard and then type in wiggle for 40 with a comma in between and now if we play this it should generate random letters as you can see on the screen right now so that is our matrix text the next thing that we're going to do is create a luma mat so we're going to make a new layer i'm going to create a black solid under effects and presets what i'm going to do is click on turbulent noise and we'll drop that on our solid. I'm gonna change the noise type to block, gonna increase the contrast a little bit. And on the evolution, again, we're gonna hold Alt or Option if you're on a Mac and click on the stopwatch and then type in the expression time times 3000. And this will make this thing 
evolve like really quickly. And the next thing I'm gonna do is right click on this black solid, click on pre-compose. I'm gonna rename this to Luma Map, and we're gonna make sure that we move all of the attributes into the new composition. So the next thing that we're gonna do is in the Luma Map composition, we're gonna add in a new adjustment layer and we are going to mosaic this. And we're gonna drop the stylized mosaic on there. And under the horizontal and vertical blocks, we're gonna type in 40. And as you can see, this now matches perfectly with our grid. And we're also gonna add a threshold. And we wanna make the threshold a little bit darker. So that there's just a few white pixels in there. Now, if we go back to our matrix text here, you should see something like this. And the way we're gonna actually make this link to the text is by clicking on the text layer and then click on math. And if you cannot see this window, all you need to do is right click and go to columns and then to modes. But under the nomad, let's click on luma mat and then click on this little alpha mat to make it the luma mat. And now it's revealing these random letters based on the luma mat that we just created. But we're not there yet. So let's go back into the Luma mat and to add in some extra spice, what I did was I dropped in a skull. This skull is actually made by me in Adobe Illustrator. So you can get this skull for yourself through dreadlabs.net. I have a Wraith asset pack that contains a lot of vector assets, textures, displacement maps as well as mockups and this skull is a part of it but you can basically drop in any graphic that you like you can also not drop in a graphic if you want to it's completely fine but what i'm going to do is add a color overlay as well as a stroke to this skull the color overlay i'm going to make white and the stroke i'm going to make black and we're going to make the size of the stroke just a little bit larger something like this and we'll drop the skull underneath the adjustment layer to pixelize it under our mosaic grid and as you can see in the matrix text this will make our skull visible and all that we need to do now is animate the opacity of our skull so let's go over the opacity and you can access this quickly by pressing t on your keyboard click on the stopwatch and make the value zero move all the way to the back of our composition and then make it 100% and this will create something like this so slowly but steadily the skull will become visible and this is what that looks like with our text it's actually really really subtle until the last moment as you can see so let's go to view and hide our grid for a second now that we're looking at it it doesn't really look looks a little bit empty i guess so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our matrix text this composition and i'm gonna pre-compose the matrix text and i'm gonna duplicate the matrix text pre -comp. forgive my mess in the project bin here i just remade this just before making this tutorial so you can ignore that part of the screen so under matrix text pre 2 i'm gonna rename this to binary text and i'm gonna delete the luma mat from this and we're gonna drop in this binary text underneath here. And this will make it really, really messy as you can see. So all you need to do now is replace this text by a row of 40 by 40 zeros. And of course, if you see eights instead of zeros, that all we need to do is remove the character offset expression. And now we have zeros again. And if it's easier, let's toggle on our grid to make sure that we actually have 40. And we do. And with this, the line height should be completely okay. All we might need to do is go into the text window and drag in this slider here to center everything to every single square. I think we should be good for now, but you can perfect this if you like and take your time. So let's go back into our matrix text and now you can see the binary in here. And let's lower the binary transparency to maybe 15%. So it's barely visible, maybe a little bit higher, 25%. And we kind of want to make these move a little bit. So the way we're going to do that is by going to the animator one here, click on add, selector, wiggly. And under the wiggly selector, we need to make the minimum amount 0%. And we need to make the character offset one. And now if we play this, this should be a random grid between ones and zeros. So let's go back into the matrix text and this is what it looks like right now. And if we want to have the ones and zeros be invisible whenever our uh, matrix text is visible, what we need to do is go 
go to this Luma map and then invert it. So let's just clean this up a little bit so it's easier to comprehend. Basically, both of these layers, the one with the binary and the one with the text, are dependent on this Luma mat layer by using a track mat. The matrix text is visible whenever our texture is white and it's invisible where it's black and whereas the binary text is the other way around so it's visible wherever the color is black and it's invisible wherever the color is white. And this results in this animation. And all that's left to do now is add in that subtle green glow. So we're going to make a new adjustment layer and we're going to add the glow effect and drop that onto our adjustment layer. I'm going to up the radius a little bit and up the intensity a little bit. And then we're going to look for the toner effect and drop the toner underneath the glow. And we're going to make the middle color a green shade. And if the glow isn't showing up, just make sure that you drop in a black solid underneath everything because that will make sure that our composition isn't transparent anymore. And that's the final animation for you. I hope this video was useful and I gave you some inspiration to create some dope animations for yourself in After Effects. This would probably do really well with CRT animation effects, with glitches, displacement maps, wave warps, or even like modulation and signal effects probably. All of those effects you can probably find a tutorial for on my channel. So I highly recommend you subscribe to the channel if you have not done that already. And if you found the tutorial a little bit difficult, if it wasn't easy to follow, the After Effects file is available on my Patreon page and the link for that will be in the description down below. On my Patreon page, you'll get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials. And at this point, I have basically hundreds of tutorials on visual arts on my YouTube channel, which again, I highly recommend you check out. So if you have any further questions, you can leave them down in the comments or you can join us on Discord where we have a community full of other visual artists. And all of these visual artists are eager to see what you make of this tutorial. So don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. And with all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.